Hi guys, welcome to part 3 of Project Linnaean Hydra, which follows the build of my new video editing and gaming PC. I'll quickly cover the components used in the build in case you missed parts 1 and 2, then we'll dive right into the benchmark results. Looking at the front of the machine, we can see the drive activity LED, coloured green to match the Razer theme, a microphone and headphone port for the motherboard audio, a pair of USB 3 ports, also green to match the build colour scheme, and finally the power switch and green LED that indicate the system is running. With the windowed side panel removed, we can get a better look at the innards of the beast. The system is built into the Razer edition of NZXT's S340 chassis, which sports a nice matte black finish and green illumination. Nestled inside is the Asus Sabertooth motherboard built around the X99 Enthusiast platform chipset. The processor is cooled by NZXT's X61 Kraken all-in-one liquid cooler that includes a 280mm radiator with a pair of 140mm fans that draw cool air in from the front of the case. Speaking of the processor, I'm running an 8-core i7-5960 Extreme Edition overclocked from the stock 3GHz to a surprisingly easy 4.5. Four sticks of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM provide 32GB of memory in quad channel mode and there's room for another four sticks to give 64GB if I feel the need. Graphics duties are handled by one of the fastest cards currently on the market, the NVIDIA GeForce 980 Ti. The boot and applications drive is a 512GB 4-lane PCIe Samsung SM951, which fits in the M2 slot on the motherboard, while data is stored on a RAID 0 set of four 256GB Samsung 850 EVO SSDs. Power is provided by a highly efficient 850W Corsair HX850 IPSU, which has enough spare capacity to run a second 980Ti if the need arises. Taking a quick look at the back of the machine, we find four USB 2 ports, a proprietary Asus diagnostic port for hooking up to their smartphone app, a BIOS reset or flashback switch, two 10 gig USB 3.1 ports, four 5 gigabit USB 3 ports, a pair of 1 gig Ethernet ports, and a full complement of audio jacks. Display connectivity from the 980Ti consists of three DisplayPort outputs, one HDMI 2.0 output for 4K support, and a single DVI dual link for legacy monitors. So let's get into the benchmarks. All these tests were run with the settings cranked up to the max, with three runs at each resolution to test various anti-aliasing options. In addition to running at the two most popular resolutions, 1080p and 1440p, I also included the ultra-wide 21x9 runs as my daily driver is an LG 34-inch that runs at 3440x1440p, and that's a lot of pixels to be throwing around. 1920x1080 is around 2 million pixels, while 2560x1440 ups that to around 3.7 million, and that's why 1440p gaming needs much more powerful hardware than 1080p gaming. But the new ultrawide panels push that to a whopping 5 million pixels, less than the 8 million on a 4K monitor, but still a hefty workload for a single graphics card. The Cinebench score shows the power of this processor, as the low 1700s are 10 or even 12 core Xeon workstation territory, and those chips cost as much as this entire machine. For some more real-world tests, I ran 7-zip as it's multi-threaded, and compressing a 3GB file was dispensed with in under 30 seconds. For video editing, a fast disk subsystem is crucial, and the Samsung PCIe drive really shines, delivering over 2GB per second of read performance and over 1.5GB per second on writes. I only had three of the four Samsung 850 EVOs on hand for my RAID array when I ran this benchmark, and even their combined performance couldn't match that tiny M2 drive, but they're no slouch when working together, giving reads in excess of 1.5GB per second and solid write performance at over 1.2GB per second. Adding a fourth drive to the array should push the numbers even closer to that PCIe drive. In a real-world test, copying 10 files totaling 30 gigabytes between the boot and data drives was dispensed with in under 28 seconds. Finally, we can look at how the system performs when encoding videos. This screenshot shows Adobe Media Encoder running on the left, NZXT's CAM system monitoring software in the middle, and Corsair's Link PSU monitoring software on the right. In this run, I'm doing a test render of this very video, upscaling the footage from 1080p to 4K. Here you can see the details of my CPU overclock. She's running at 4.5 GHz via a 45 multiplier on the 100 MHz base clock, and to get the system stable at that speed, I needed to only raise the core voltage to 1.15 volts. A lot of people seem to need 1.3 volts or more to pull that off, so I guess I got lucky in the silicon lottery, but maybe the overclocking socket on this Asus motherboard with its additional voltage delivery pins is actually providing some benefit. Who knows? Although the render hasn't been running for long, you can see here that the processor was running at an average 61 degrees C, although that did climb to 66 degrees at some points during the run, and I'm not using the GPU to assist here as it has a zero load on it. The GPU is still a little warm from the previous benchmarks, it normally idles in the mid 40s. It's important to look at the temperature of each core separately when you're overclocking, as some cores do run hotter than others, which is entirely normal. I've noticed core 3 runs the hottest, followed by core 6, with a delta of around 6 degrees between the hottest and coolest running cores. 
I'm very impressed with NZXT's Kraken cooler. It runs silently under normal system use, but when the heavily overclocked system is under stressing loads like this, it obviously does spin up its water pump and fans, and at full chat the system is very noisy, but that's just physics. Before finishing up, I want to quickly point out the performance of the often overlooked power supply. As you can see here, the cooling fan isn't even turning while the system is rendering, and it's managing an impressive 92% plus efficiency, even though it's running at barely more than one third of its capability. The system draws only 100 watts from the plug under idle, but as you can see, when the CPU is working hard, it takes that up to 325 watts. So that Kraken cooler is dissipating some serious heat from that heavily overclocked processor. The system is performing as planned. The two most important things, raw processor performance and a super fast storage setup, are what I needed, and it definitely delivers. Thanks to the 980 Ti, it's also a great gaming rig, but if you're looking to spend this kind of cash on a purely gaming machine versus video editing, I'd drop down to a 4 core processor and add a second 980 Ti with the money saved. I hope you guys found this project interesting. If you have any questions about this rig, please put them in the comments, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more builds and product reviews.